I started off in my kitchen, with my house burning down around me. I took a quick look under the sink to see if there was anything that I could grab, but there was too much fire, so I quickly ran outside. I checked myself for injuries, and I had a deep wound and I also had a piece of glass lodged in my groin. If I was going to survive, I was going to need to remove this glass and bandage my groin as fast as possible. A zombie tried to attack me, so I pushed him to the ground and dealt with him, and I quickly began to take his clothes. Unfortunately, that wasn't all of the zombies, and I had to take care of another one before I could get a chance to bandage myself. I checked the clothes that the zombies had, and quickly started to get dressed. Then I decided to make my escape north into the woods to try and get away from them. As I continued north, I stumbled upon a farmhouse. It looked to be deserted, but when I got closer, I realised that I wasn't alone. I quickly checked the kitchen, as if I was going to survive, I was going to need food, and I was also going to need a melee weapon. But, unfortunately, there was only one can of mushrooms in the kitchen. I dealt with the rest of the undead in the house, and decided to come up with a plan. But, whilst I was checking the house, I got baited hard. I found a sewing kit, and unfortunately, there was no needle in it. That would have been the perfect start. I would have been able to sew up my deep wound, but not this time. Something I did manage to find was some sleeping tablets, and that was good because it means that I would actually be able to sleep. Because I was in intense pain, I would need to be ridiculously tired to fall asleep. Because there was such little food in the house itself, I decided to turn to foraging to try and find some berries to sustain me and to try and get rid of this cold. Fortunately, I was able to find berries whilst foraging. The other things that I found were tree branches and chip stones. This meant that I could make knives, which means that I could sharpen the tree branches into spears and it would mean that I would have a melee weapon. I knew of a cabin just north of me through the trees, so I decided to head up there, but unfortunately, there wasn't just a cabin up there, there was a few zombies that I had to deal with before I could get to the cabin. Unfortunately, there was no food in the cabin, so I had to venture back home and open my can of mushrooms that I had been saving. So, after I ate the can of mushrooms, I decided to take some sleeping tablets and head to bed. In the morning, my number one priority was to find more berries, and I did. I did, but unfortunately, they were poisonous. But not to worry, I did find more, and these berries I was able to eat. Because I found quite a lot of berries, it meant that it gave me an opportunity to head back to the town. It meant that I could make the trip without having to worry about eating food, or at least eating until I got there. The town was going to be perfect for finding more food, more resources, and more weapons. On my way to the town, I had to deal with a few zombies, but luckily one of those zombies was a construction zombie, and he had a backpack for me, and a nice hard hat too. I made it to the house by nightfall, but CDDA being CDDA meant that it wasn't going to be that easy. I had to kill some zombies before I could get access to this house, and somewhere safe to lay my head. So we have a house, right? <gasps> that was a clip from my livestream which you can find the link to in the description. This is where I record all of my gameplay. But in all of my time playing CDDA, I have never found a belt. A belt for me has been one of the rarest pieces of clothing that I could possibly have asked for. At this point, I was screaming that this is the run. This is it. And let's just see how it goes. It might be. I woke the next morning to some banging on my window, and you know what that means, you gotta take care of it. This house was okay, but in the way of resources, it didn't really have much. So if I wanted to get food, melee weapons, I was going to need to venture further into the town. And for me to do that, I was going to need to kill a lot of zombies. I made it to the next house after killing a few zombies. And to my surprise, in the wardrobe of this house, there was a double barrel shotgun with a few shells in it, which I would take note of on my map in case it came in handy later. But that isn't all this house had, it had a few cans in the kitchen, and I celebrated with eating a can of corned beef almost instantly. I decided to keep killing, keep looting, and keep moving. 
I headed back to the house where it all started to see if the fire was still burning as I could use it to my advantage to kill a lot of the zombies. And, to my surprise, it was. Now the way that you're seeing this next section is it's um, extremely sped up. It's um, about 400% quicker than how long this actually took me. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch the entire thing. But just know, this happened for over half an hour of me just running around the trailer park, the houses, shouting at the top of my lungs to see if I could attract as many zombies in as possible so that they would catch each other on fire and it meant that I didn't need to kill them and I could loot the houses freely. We eventually get rid of the majority of the zombie population using the fire and the last zombie that I killed had a backpack on him which I was able to grab before his body turned into ash. With the majority of the zombies in the area being dead now, I decided to go around the trailer park and look for more food and more meds. If you do play CDDA, I suggest that you use a pen or a pencil on your map to cross out the houses that you've looted. It means that you don't get confused and you don't end up looting houses that you've already looted. I also decided to use this taxi as a temporary food storage that I could just use as a, as a stock point that I could go back to at any time if I felt hungry or I wanted to grab something. After that, I decided to head back to the place where it had all started, my house and I decided to see if there was anything in the garage that I could use. And to my surprise, there was a needle in there. This needle meant that I could finally sew up my leg and I wouldn't need to be limping anymore, meaning that I could move a lot faster and I had less chance of being grabbed by zombies. I went around the past zombies that I killed, ripping up their clothing to try and get some thread, as I would be able to use this with the needle to sew up my leg. Whilst I was looting, I, I must have felt a little bit patriotic and needed a bit of a morale boost, so I decided to paint my face and uh, shout freedom for Scotland. But they'll never take our freedom! Anyway, with the face painted and morale at an all-time high, I decided it's time to go and get some more zombies. And uh, weirdly enough, for the rest of that day, I didn't really do very much. I kind of just sat in the taxi, gorged myself, and um, read a magazine, and uh, passed a bit of time, and went to sleep. Anyway, never mind that. I woke up in the morning, and I decided I need to start this day off right, so I ate a can of dog food, because I was going to need a lot of energy for what we were about to do today. Today, we were going to be making an attempt to work our way into the city, try and get to the nearby neighbourhoods, see if we could potentially find a car in the driveway with a working battery, and we would be in the money. Some of you might not know this, but the CDDA challenge starts in Muldra. The significance of this is that Muldra has the highest amount of zombie spawns in any town, other than, of course, Louisville, because Louisville is absolutely huge, meaning that this is going to be very difficult for us to make any kind of headway, and we were going to need to kill a lot of zombies if we wanted to get anywhere in this town. just when you think you've killed the zombies in the area to get you into that house that you're looking to loot, there's more. Because there's always more. Eventually I'd killed enough zombies in the area and I could loot the house and to be honest I was a little bit disappointed, kinda. It you know, there was a couple of cans of food in there and it would last me another another day or two, but yeah, overall I was a I was a little bit, you know, I wanted a little bit more for my efforts, but yeah, doesn't really reward you like that. Now, my main goal for today was to try and clear a path into this neighborhood so that I could get a good view of the neighborhood, I could see the driveways, and ultimately I could give myself a better chance of finding a car that would get me out of Muldra. Because if I was gonna make headway in this, I wasn't going to be able to do it in Muldra. It was just going to be too long. It was just going to be too many zombies. I needed to move out of Muldra. Could always come back, but 
for right now to find somewhere to stay is a permanent place, Muldra was not it. But the problem with that is because of the sheer amount of zombies and you don't want to just run in gun ho and attract so many of them because you know that'll end your run probably. Um, you just need to take it step by step and just keep clearing them until you can move inch by inch. Eventually I was able to kill enough zombies to get into the house and I did find a metal working level 1 book which was pretty useful. Not to mention there was a can of carrots in the kitchen but yeah. We are getting closer to moving into the neighbourhood to get a step closer to our goal. Because I was killing zombies all day, I was absolutely exhausted. So I decided to go back to the house that we spent a lot of time clearing to relax, read my book, and then wind down the night and go to sleep. And well, <laughs> yeah. After that close encounter with being so exhausted and the window being caved in, I decided that I was taking zero chances. I grabbed one of the dining chairs, I moved it into the toilet and I slept there because I wasn't taking any chances. The next day was very much more of the same but I wanted to try and master the art of killing zombies as they jumped over a fence and were vulnerable on the ground because you could one hit them. I felt like that was going to be something that if I wanted to kill a lot of zombies in a short space of time, that was something that I needed to utilise or something I needed to figure out how to utilise and I thought I was doing a good job. Pretty solid, pretty solid, made that one look easy. Right okay, there's another group at the next house, repeat, let's just repeat. You know the saying, biting off more than you can chew? Yeah, I use that a lot in this playthrough, biting off a little bit more than I can chew. Now, um, when I say I attempted the CDDA challenge, this wasn't my first attempt. This wasn't my second attempt. This wasn't my third attempt. This was roughly around about two weeks of attempts. After two weeks of attempt, I had the perfect run. I had my legs sewn up, I had a belt, I had a car full of food, I killed all the zombies in the, in the area, I had a safe place to live. But Zomboid takes it all away. Zomboid can take everything away like that. I'm probably overlaying some uh, some footage of my deaths right now and um, yeah. I tried boys, I tried to do a CDDA series for you. I'm hoping I can get one going in the future. This was my attempt at CDDA and um, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you've got any other ideas that you would like me to do, if there's any other challenges or things that you can think of that are Zomboid related or maybe even other games, any other games that you might want me to try, let me know in the comments, let me know in the comments. But make sure to like, subscribe and go follow my live streams, that's where all this gameplay was recorded and I will see you in the next video.